So we come back into the story as it has been. Uh, y'all think you so Malba left probably around eight nine o'clock in the evening. Um, he'll probably be riding for a long period of night, uh, or maybe he'll he'll ride until he can't anymore and camp camp out and get into Helm's Hold tomorrow morning. Um, what do you all do in the meantime? Do you go to bed? Do you tell Sildar? Like what, it, what, what, what happens? I feel like we should tell Sildar. Yeah, it's probably for the best. Okay. Head on over to the town hall. Okay. So you two go over to the town, the town hall, uh, it is very late, uh, and nobody is home. So let's say that... Oh, I thought it was like 9. Never mind. Oh, it's yeah, late, it's then. like eight thirty, nine o'clock at night. Oh, that's not... That's uh, late. You know what? You know what? Actually, um, the front door would be locked, but there would be a light on in Sildar's office. I'll knock on his window. I can't read it. Okay. Huh? Um, the front door. So, uh, you... As, as a note, you can always just, like, press to digitation some noises. I figured, but... Yeah. So, uh, Sildar will turn, and uh, you, you can't really see... Let me see here. How would that work? Because clear glass would be... Okay, so you knock on his window, uh, and Sildar... You you see a shape move, and then it comes to the uh, front door of the hall, and you hear a large bolt click, and then the door opens. Can I help you? Oh, uh, gentlemen, uh, what can I do for you at this hour? Um, not... Much. I just thought we'd tell you that Malpa left. Just he... unfortunately, he has family business to attend to back home. Oh, no, uh, nothing too horrible. I hope. It, it seemed very urgent because good. he left immediately. Oh dear. He uh. said he was sending a replacement, but we don't know who it is or when they'll be arriving. Oh my. So is he, uh, come in, come in. And he, he'll usher you inside. Uh, and you know that there is a, a couple of benches just inside the door and he'll, he'll guide you over to them and, and not take you into the, uh, the sheriff's office proper. Uh, and he'll set you down and sit down across from you and say, uh, did you figure out where he would be going first? He was I, stopping by the hold first. I Let's sent see. them a preemptive letter. Good, good. Well, this is terrible, honestly. Hmm. I wonder if I can do anything to help him on his way. And he'll he'll stand and say, uh, "I'll try to get in touch with the Lord's Alliance and see if we can't." Uh, get him some safer passage or, or s some equipment or something. Uh, he's from Tule, correct? I believe so. Hmm. I've heard of the trouble that they've had there. All right. Well then, uh, thank you for telling me. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, it looks like we'll be staying in town for a bit longer. Well, I, I One wish... more thing. Hmm. Speaking of letters, uh, our contact from the Everwatch Rangers is supposedly arriving in Phandalin within the month to give us a freelance license for adventuring under he'll, their... He'll, he'll, he stops you. A, a freelance license from the hold? Yeah. Now that is interesting. They don't... They don't do that very often, to be fair. 
You, uh, you must have done something pretty impressive. I mean, I, I know you did, but they must have recognized it as well. That is very interesting indeed. Well, wow. congratulations. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's all there is to say about it. Thank you. Uh, if there's nothing else I can do for you this evening, I will try to get a letter off to uh, my order and see if there's anything we can do to help. Thank you. Do you know if Gundren is at the <sighs> Sleeping Giant? Mm, to be honest. Oh, hold on. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. <clears throat> okay, I've got my voice back. Stars. Did I just hear you say testing about your own voice? Yeah, uh, you did. <laughs> it's just another sound. It's just another instrument, man. Um, he will. I'm gonna stop doing Sildar for a little bit. He will let you know uh, that, to the best of his knowledge, they will either be at the Sleeping Giant or the Stonehill Inn. Thank is you. Is the Sleeping Giant also an inn, or is it just a bar? It is a bar, but you did notice that it has a second story, like a second a second floor. You should break in, baseball. <laughs> Dude, Malva's gone. We can do anything we want. We can do anything <laughs> we want. <laughs> but as we head out, I want to go check out the inn and see if Gundren and Nundra are there. Okay. So you go back, you go back to the inn, uh, and you go up to. Hold on. Toblin, Toblin Stonehill, uh, and you ask him about the dwarves. Uh, yes. <clears throat> you will say, "Well, I've I know that they checked in earlier, but I." I uh, I don't know that I've actually seen them in here all that often. Uh, perhaps around midnight they show up, uh, usually in a <laughs> an extreme state of drunkenness, and then they leave bright and early the next day back to the sleeping giant. So I, I haven't seen them come in this evening. Uh, no worries. It's of no importance. Thank you. No, no. I suppose I'll head on back to our rooms at the end. That's where I want to go. Okay. Uh, it becomes the next morning. Uh, and in that time, Fitz, you have received uh, another letter in the tube. Um, and it, it is in response to the letter you sent about Malba, and it says simply, Understood. That's it? Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, okay. Fuck you too, I guess. <laughs> they acknowledged us, at least. That's all you want. Well, they just said the old-time equivalent of K with a period after. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, so, uh, Fanar, did you want to go talk to the dwarves, or? Uh, no. Okay. So, uh, more breakfast shenaniganry. Um, perhaps trying a few of the new ales. Uh, Toblin will uh, let you know that he had put away uh, something new and interesting uh, a couple of about a about a month ago, and it's ready to to give a try. Uh, he has brewed his own ale and is offering you first dibs. Well, it's never too early in the morning. He laughs and brings you a a brimming mug of uh, a a black ale. This this thing is like the color of tar, and it smells uh, of um, it smells of herbs. Very uh, very earthy flavor, uh, and yet just. Just slightly sweet. Can I have like a shot glass of that? 
he will definitely give you a shot of that. It's basically... No. It's, it'd be smaller than a normal mug to him, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. It'd be, no it'd be like, mugs? it'd be like a does small pass, tumbler. Does he have past gnome accessibility standards? Uh, y- yes. We're gonna shut in here. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you get through your breakfast and your morning ale, uh, and Darren Edermath comes to your door, comes in, and he finds you. Uh, specifically you, Thanar. And he'll walk up and he'll say, uh, we had spoken yesterday and I, I, uh, took a look through my old adventuring notes, as it were. Uh, a few memoirs and mementos from the time, and I may actually be able to answer your questions. Uh, do you have a, a little while? I don't see why not. Would you care to try a glass of Toblin's new ale? He he looks at this thick black ale and he sort of he's he's half grimaces and says uh, and I I'm afraid it's a, a little early for me. Thank you though. Are, are you sure you don't want to take my glass? I'm perfectly certain. Thank you, Thanar. I I do appreciate it. Thanar will grimace down at the last whatever's remaining. It is chunky. <laughs> the last bit is chunky. Uh, it it's it is good. I will tell you, it is genuinely a tasty breakfast ale. So, so what did you find for me? Uh, he is uh, wanting you to come with him to his house. So let's go. On our way. All right. Uh, Fitz, do you go with them, or do you want to try something else this morning? No, Fitz will stay in the tavern for now. He has other things to do. All right. So what does Fitz do? I think... Let me think of what I want to do. As you go and look at the list, the itemized list I sent you earlier yesterday. Yeah, shut (laughs) up. I, that was a pin in secrecy. I think I would go... Secrecy, quotation marks. Thank you. Um, I would go to Sister Grail's church, I guess. Sure, sure. Yeah, 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 Okay, yeah. I just okay. broke my voice on Sildar, but sure, I'll do, I I'll do two voices. I would go visit Myrna Dendrar, so you stop being a whiny little bitch. Oh, three voices. No, ah. that's great. That's fine. Sure. But what do you want? Fine, Fitz goes and sits in his room and he shoves his head into the pillow. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Um, <clears throat> that's fine. Uh, you want to go visit Sister Gurel? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think he'll visit the Dendrons first, actually. Wait, guys. If you shove your head in the sand, are you ostracizing yourself? I hate you so much. <laughs> that was bad. Fan art, take three points of psychic damage. <laughs> I don't think my joke was so bad it hurt myself. Oh, I, I, I am the dungeon master. You hurt me, I hurt you. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, so you can go visit uh, Myrna and the Dendrars, uh, who are playing in Dallas this weekend. At, uh, anyway, so... <laughs> They're a band. They're not a band. Oh, okay. But Myrna and the Dendrars sounds like a band. Casey and the Sunshine Band. All right. So let us do a thing here. Cool. All right. So here and there. Good. Cool. All right. So Fitz, tell me what you're doing. Um, as in what I'm immediately doing, or what the goal is? Uh, what the goal is. Uh, I think Fitz kind of just feels bad, and he wants to see what they're up to. Okay. 
uh, will this like what? How do you how do you want to do that? Like by knocking on the door. Okay. You're not even gonna bring flowers. Shame on you. I have conjuration, homie. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, actually, as you, it's it's still pretty early in the morning. Uh, as you oh, I'm get not going to the house at like seven a.m. Oh no 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 no! I, I mean it's like like nine or something. They should definitely that's, be up. That's that's basically mid afternoon. I mean, honestly, in this time period, probably. Gross. So, uh, you are, uh, you're approaching the house, and you don't quite get there when, and I have, there it is, Nars and Nilsa. Nars, the boy, is 13 years old, and Nilsa, the girl, is 18 years old. I return. What did you say? Uh, da, 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 da. Nars is 13 years old and Nilsa is 18. Okay. Fitz, how old are you? He is. Oh, I throw it down. It's 20 something. Which, by the way, is like a baby. Oh, no, he's not 20. He's 30 still still a baby yeah he's like 34 it's like gnomes live for 300 years or so so uh, for like 500 as you uh approach uh mirna's house uh before you even like get to the porch or even onto the walkway leading up to the front door uh it bursts open and uh nilsa uh runs out uh, tying an apron, and she uh, run just runs straight past you. Where is she going? She's going towards the inn. And okay. as as you as you look at her run away, you realize that she's wearing the same outfit uh, as uh, one of the the girls that works there. I. I'll, I'll, I'll just go in to the house then. <laughs> <laughs> just slip through the open door. I mean, she opened it for me. That's basically an invitation. Okay. Don't take that out of context. I don't like that this is being recorded anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, so she did close the door behind her. Oh. Like, she she's... No, I'll go open. I thought she left it open. I'll go roll, open. roll inside for me. So am I rolling insight to see if I know if the door's open or not? No, you're rolling to see if you can figure oh, out. Okay, no. You, yeah. She's running to the inn for some reason, and she seemed to be in a hurry. If I know, does my character know? Uh, what do you know? I think she's going to work. Uh, Fitz can probably guess that, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll just go up and knock on the door. Okay, cool. Uh, Myrna will open the door, and uh, she looks she lo- still looks tired, uh, but you know, having lost her husband and all, but uh, she's she's sort of she's sort of filling out again, like she's eating better, and uh, she looks a lot healthier than when you first saw her, and she'll she'll welcome you inside, offer you tea, the like. What kind of tea is it? It is uh, a an herbal tea, uh, lots of cinnamon and uh, just a bit of mint. There's never a time where you mention tea that I'm not going to ask. By the way, and so help me, I'll have an answer for you. You better, dude. I Are you an it. avid tea drinker? I actually really do like tea. Okay. He imbibes coffee like his life depends on it. Yeah, no, like I I buy whole bean coffee and I hand grind it and I use a French press to brew it. And I Goodness. have just a splash of milk so that it cuts the acidity so I do not kick in my heartburn again. Cuz I eroded the lining of my esophagus by drinking black coffee during college. Oh my god. <laughs> So, why why would you ever drink black coffee? Because I was an engineer. 
and, and, and it <laughs> replaced dude. it replaced my blood. God. So anyway, I'll have you know I didn't drink any coffee as an engineer. <laughs> Are you an engineer? Yeah, I was a chemical yeah. engineer. Oh, what really? Yeah. Oh, I feel like I've mentioned this before. Well, okay, listen, my brain is full of mush, so deal with it. It's from the coffee. It's probably from the coffee, yeah. It's like I, my brain doesn't work unless it's stimulated. It's a socially acceptable chemical stimulant. So what do you want? Yeah. Uh, so uh, herbal tea, happy to see you. The The house smells like bread, just like fresh baked bread. Uh, and you kind of get the idea that she's been doing some some baking for the inn as well. Just sort of as you look around, you see like um, handkerchiefs or or not handkerchiefs, uh, bandanas, sort of just, just strips of cloth with Stonehill Inn uh, seals on it. And she's got a a basket up on a counter that one of those that two of those are in and it's sort of being filled with bread. <laughs> Thanar, uh, you get to Edermath's house and he takes you inside. And he also has tea, uh, which Fitz cannot ask me about because he's not there. Oh. Thanner I'll just drink without even knowing what it is. Yeah, of course he will. <clears throat> and um he will he'll set you down and he'll go over to his bookshelf and he'll pull down a a, a notebook of some sort and then he'll pull down a couple of scrolls and he'll set them on the coffee table um between the couch that you're on and the armchair that he's in. And uh, he will say, you asked me yesterday uh, if there would be any problems between the Order of the Gauntlet and Helm's Hold. And I did a little digging in my old notes, and technically the answer is no. However... Helm's Hold failed once, and fairly spectacularly. And it was up to the Order of the Gauntlet to pick up their slack. I don't know specifically that there would be any animosity between them, but it's something you might like to know about. What, where did the Everwatch Rangers go wrong? Or the hold go wrong? He grabs a one of the scrolls and unties it. And he hands it to you. And he says, tell me, Thanar, what do you know about dragons? Now, Siren. Hey, we me. are stepping out of time now stepping out of time what does that even mean malba has already spoken with you in person okay uh, he arrived oh probably a week ago now uh, and he looked haggard uh, like he had been riding hard and he explained the situation to you uh, how did you respond? Um, first, mainly I showed concern for like his family and his, like people's safety. But I feel like Maba would have uh, reassured them that like I, I feel like Siren would have tried to help, but Maba would have declined just like he did with Fitz and Than Thanar. Hmm. Um, and once since siren hasn't been working like a real job he's just been doing like little little tasks and whatnot since you like, have injury. siren has been 
uh, a member of the city watch at Helm's Hold. Um, just sort of, he he guards a a watch station. Um, on the walls, he will occasionally patrol through the town, but he's been taking it easy uh, since his injury. Yeah. So after hearing that, he would recommend him to join an adventuring group. He would definitely want to like not disappoint Malba and say like no. So he would definitely do it. Okay. And honestly, just like start getting ready to go and ask as many questions, like to get as much information about like who's in the group, like everything he knows about the people in the group. And I'm I'm sure what that what does Malba say about Thanar and Fitz to this guy oh, when asked? God. You're gonna make me do that. <laughs> I kind of wanted to ask too, but I wasn't about to. Put you uh, okay, I'll do that. So first, he starts with Fitz. He's this uh, you're a gnome, right? Yeah, you're a gnome. Yeah. What the fuck? Uh, do you mean? <laughs> sorry, it's a lot of pressure. Okay. I, no, I get it. I get it. Um, little gnome, quite wealthy. Um, little uh, ditzy, I guess you could say. I don't know if that's the right word, but. He's uh he's got energy for everyone and more. So just just like don't get overwhelmed by him, I guess. But he's he means well. He means very well. And then there's uh Thanar. He's a uh... That's the nicest thing anyone's said about me this whole campaign. I was <laughs> <laughs> a nice guy. I don't know <laughs> what else you want him to say. Um Thanar, no, he's a uh, He's a big half orc. Um more on the quiet side. But, but if he wants something to get done, he just does it. He doesn't really care what people think of him. He just does whatever he wants to do. We we got into a couple uh, arguments, but it, it it worked out in the end. Pretty good guy. Okay. So does what does Siren Siren think of this? Um, he, so main two emotions are, he just doesn't want to disappoint Maba. Like that's, that's number one. And then he's also incredibly nervous and anxious because he's not really good with new people. He mm. got lucky with Maba. That's about it. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> Maba will, uh, be there and he will uh, receive two letters while he's there. Uh, one of them is from uh, the Leave Extraordinary Gentleman because my brain will not engage. Hold on. The Lord's Alliance. He gets a, a, a letter from the Lord's Alliance. Um, it has a dock number in never in neverwinter uh, and gives him a name to contact when he gets there uh, they will be able to uh, help him with some travel okay and it's signed lord's alliance yes it has the seal of the lord's alliance and then the the name of a member somewhere in uh okay neverwinter so i would know that would be a uh, silver Doing. You probably you would I can you, assume that. you would assume that it, it, he probably had something to do with it. I would uh, tell Siren to uh, meet with the uh, mayor or not mayor, uh, sheriff of the town, and uh, thank him for me for giving me passage to my home. So now it has been a week since Malba left. Uh, you have packed. And you get a knock at your door. Ooh. It is the Priyat, Abriv Hadam. Uh, you recognize that this gentleman is your contact with uh, Helm's Hold. <clears throat> I, I don't know if I've made this clear, but Priyat is the word that Helmites. Uh, the worshippers of Helm use for their priests. 
this okay. this hold is essentially a fortified church to Helm, Helm the Watcher, God of Guardians. Okay. Uh, and the church established the Everwatch Rangers as a sanctioned and controlled adventuring group. And their priests are essentially their agents, if you will. And Abreev Hadam is yours. And he will ask you, So, are you ready to go? Uh, I, I, I suppose so. Wonderful. We should be getting on the road a little later today. Uh, oh, okay, I'm, I'm all packed, so just let me know when we're leaving. Uh, have you take your stuff down to the uh, down to the stables, and we will load it up and head on the road. And I will see okay. you in an hour or three. Uh, oh, okay. I will see you. Th- thank you. And he leaves. And I carry one bag at a time because I'm quite scrawny. <laughs> okay. I don't know how many bags I have, but Ooh, shooter. How many bags do you have? Like, does does Siren have <laughs> a lot of stuff? Oh, let's see. Uh, what's 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 in his inventory? Uh, no, like we're talking. This clothes. is your time. I know. Any I know. Free no. item that you want right now. <laughs> what does he have? Three bag of holdings. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, the a giant statue of a raven just mm. in one of the bag of holdings. Yeah, just interesting. To, yeah. But, it's like yeah. it's like the size of uh, two carriages stacked on top of each other. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's a cool. big bag of holding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's got a little miniature bobblehead of Mao Ba. Oh, in, nice. With him, yeah. It's got <laughs> a like, little case to it. Is it signed? <laughs> like a wooden <laughs> case. Is it? Is it signed? It is. Fortunately, he he didn't have the courage to actually get it signed. Oh, that's he also the worst. Mao Ba doesn't know that he created. He has it. For... <laughs> it's the worst, especially yeah. since Mao Ba dies. So. Yeah, That's it's really shame. unfortunate. Um, Mal Ba dies? What? Spoilers. Probably That's for like, later in the season. Probably like. Oh two my bags. god. I can't believe you just spoiled that for me. The hey, man. Fuck, dude. It's like, you know, it. the journey is the whole story, right? It's not the destination. Yeah, the destination still matters, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Getting back on track. Jo- like two bags. Jokes aside, you've got like two bags, you said? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, so uh, you get on the road uh, later that day, and you uh, you leave the hold with Abreev Hadam, who has like two steamer trunks, and then a uh, a, a duffel bag like the one that you were carrying, and then he has uh, a a small briefcase. Uh, with like a, a couple of scroll tubes strapped to the outside. And you ride in silence for a while. Thanar, make me a history check. Okay. Uh, side note, Gear, how do you keep all of your voices like attach individual character? Because um, past like the first couple sessions, you haven't really messed it up. Um... Stereotypes? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, wow. honestly, it it gets difficult sometimes. Wow, that's some uh, history right there. Well, I a couple of my fellow sailors said they had seen a dragon once, but I don't believe them. They're a bunch of drunken liars. <laughs> <laughs> I I also dealt with sailors uh, in my time. Uh, you are correct, but not all of them. Uh, a lot of dragons actually make their homes along the coast in in islands uh, just off off the way. So th- a lot of this is sort of basic, but let let's go over it anyway. Um, there are two types of dragons: uh, chromatic and uh, metallic. Uh, chromatic dragons are evil-aligned and worship the 
dark dragon god Tiamat. Uh, and, of course, chromatic dragon, uh, metallic dragons, my apologies, uh, all are good aligned, and they worship Bahamut, the, the good aligned uh, god of dragons. Um, there are many colors of dragons and, and materials, I suppose, if they're metallic. Uh, the chromatic dragons are the ones you have to watch out for. And long ago, about, oh, I would say close to 500 years now, um, one made its way down from the north and settled in the woods near uh, Neverwinter. Um, a white dragon, ancient and very evil, she settled there and began to wreak ultimate havoc in the region. Uh, it caught the attention of... Uh, Helm's Hold, and of course, ev anyone who had anything uh, that uh, that they held dear. You see, white dragons are chromatic dragons in general are evil, uh, but most of them are also very intelligent. White dragons, on the other hand, are brutes and hunters. Uh, think of a solitary wolf. Um, but with great magical power and the size of, oh, a house, maybe two houses. Uh, it was when she moved out of the Lurkwood and attacked... Let me see here. Ah. The records show that uh, she was generally ignored, but eventually... How can you ignore a dragon? <laughs> because it's somebody else's problem. Like, does, does Thanar ask that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's not necessarily seriously. But. Yeah. Uh, Darren will smile at you and say, when it's a dragon, it's someone else's problem until it's yours. Uh, and ordinarily... Part of the reason that Helm's Hold was established was because roving bands of adventurers did whatever they wanted. Um, I was one, and we made quite a hash of things a number of times. But during that time, people just assumed that if there was an evil dragon in the area, there was an adventuring party nearby that would take care of it. And many tried, and they all died. They all died horribly. Um, it wasn't until she attacked a shipment out of Waterdeep, and you can see that he's he's reading from the notes and tracing his line, his his finger across the lines. Attacked a shipment out of Waterdeep that. Uh, the hold got involved. They sent a a full squad of knights and holy paladins of Helm flying the banner of Helm's hold towards her keep in the in the Lurkwood. None of them returned. It is perhaps the greatest failing the hold has ever known. And then, the Order of the Gauntlet took up the call. My father took up the call. 
Fitz, are you still with uh, with the Dendrars? Um, I'm confused. Did you expect me to not be? I'm. How much time has passed? What? Time is time is irrelevant. <laughs> We're just swapping around. We're jumping around. Oh, I mean... I assumed I would have talked to her, yeah. Sure. Hopping around Tokyo City like a big playground. Did you have anything oh, okay. you wanted to talk with her about? Or are you just socializing? I was just going to talk to her, but I had things to say if you wanted me to say them. But I also, they're not very important, but... Okay, it's up to you. Like, if you if you actually want to have a role play, play session with Myrna Dendrar, you can. Uh, if if you just sort of wanted to stop by and uh, gain some points in the Paragon Tree, you can do that too. Oh. Uh, um, <laughs> so we we are going by by the end of this whole thing. We will have covered a month. Okay. I understand. I think I'll probably not waste our time with a conversation that I don't have much to say except lame jokes. All right. <laughs> so what are you doing instead? Oh, uh, so no, I just like talk to her and her son. And you're the one who had shit planned. Well, I had shit planned, but I just feel like I'll be wasting our time when we have i feel like a lot to go through so what i mean if if you don't have anything specifically to say to mirna which of the other items on your list would you like to do i would the one i was interested in was the spell book i want to know what spells i found in the spell book. okay so uh, as you leave Myrna's place, she will stop you, and uh, she goes over to um, th- where she has a loaf of uh, black bread uh, cooling, and she will wrap it up and hand it off to you, and uh, bend down and kiss you on the forehead and say thank you for all that you've done. Uh, you're welcome. Have a nice rest of your day. I'll see you around. And then you have also back... Faisal, I have specific jokes planned, but I'm just that efficient with our time. And then you're back at the inn and you're going through your spell books, yes? Yes. Okay, cool. So which one do you start which so you've got um you've got the ones from the Drow spellcasters. And then you've got the big one from uh, the Black Spider. And then you have the old magic textbooks that you found. Um, I think I'll start with the Drow one. Okay. The the casters or the Black Spider? Oh, sorry. The casters. Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, let me see here. Let me have... Uh, an Arcana check. Yikes! Motherfucker. <laughs> okay. So you pour over this for the rest of the for the rest of the day, um, and you have to translate it from from uh, under speak. Under common is what it's called. It's the language of of the drow and those who live in the underdark, and that's that's challenging. Um, but in uh, by the end of the day, you have uncovered the ice knife spell. Oh, cool! Yep, and it will cost you, I think, twenty five gold to actually uh, put it in your own spell book. Yeah, I'll do it. Cool. All right, so add that to your spell list. Okay. Oh damn it! It's not in the compendium. No, no, that would that would that's a new one. Lame! I have to fucking type now. <laughs> you can you can do later. it. You can do it after the session. Yeah, I'll save that for. Okay. 
Um, Siren. What up? You yeah. are in Abreev Hadam's office. Wait, weren't we already on the road? And Malba is standing next to you. As well as two other individuals. Uh, a Furbolg druid by the name of Tuatha Danan and a Kenku rogue whose name is Page Turn. Page Turner? No, just Page Turn. Okay. Uh, well, you I... should know something about these two uh, other creatures. Uh, Furbolgs are giant kin. Uh, they are between seven and eight feet tall uh, with sort of a light blue skin. They have uh, long pointed ears and big flat noses. Uh, they're very uh, friendly looking, though quiet and a little shy, if you will. Uh, most of them are druids. Kenku, on the other hand, are uh, crow people. Awesome. Yes, they actually are very cool. Uh, <laughs> they so hard to play them. They also can't speak. They mimic sounds that they've heard. This one's name is Page Turn because anytime uh, he is asked to identify himself, he makes the sound of a page turning. <laughs> uh, Abreev Hadam is seated across from you and he hands each of you a sheet of parchment. And he will explain that you have just been assigned to a mission. Uh, he will say, The people of Keldale have asked the Hold for our help with a wolf problem. Several wolves in the area have uh, been noted to be asking a bit strangely of late. Uh, there are more sightings of them in the region, and we are, they are a bit concerned, uh, especially considering that a member of their own community, one Res Belagost, was discovered to be a werewolf. They fear that after being uncovered in this way, he is building a wolf army, if you will, to strike out at the city. We are asking you four to go and be a first line of defense, or at least a bolstering to the city watch. Pack your things. You leave in the morning. You go off, and you pack your your bags for the road, and the four of you load up in a cart and head out from Helm's Hold towards Keldell. Uh, on the way, uh, you learn that Page Turn is very quiet, uh, for a, especially for a Kenku. Uh, Kenku are usually mimicking sounds that they hear and, and sort of preparing themselves in case they need them. Uh, but he has sort of just found himself a corner and spends a lot of his time just sort of caring for his, uh, his, his daggers and uh, rogue equipment. Uh, Tuatha Danan is also quiet but very friendly. Whenever you ask him a, a question, he will engage with you um, until until you're done or until the subject is passed and then he gazes out the window and, and twirls a bit of holly that uh, he keeps behind one ear. Do you do anything on the journey there? Um, I mean, Siren would do anything. He wouldn't. Is this the first time I've met all of them? 
This is the first time that you have met uh, Tuatha and Page Turn. Okay. Um, I the only thing Siren would do is just follow Maba's lead. Okay. Like if he goes to try to converse with anyone, he would kind of just be like, like a little brother kind of like situation where he's just like standing behind like just trying to be a part of it uh, does malba engage with any of them uh he'll walk over to both of them and try to make conversation okay does he probably have... starting with the furball because i imagine malba would know about kenku and how it's uh not easy to communicate with them hmm Okay. Is that like common knowledge that that's uh, how what Kankus are? For an adventurer, it's probably common. Uh especially one who works in the hold, it it'd probably be reasonable to know that. Okay. So uh we're all like how big is this cart? Like is it a walk around cart or we're we just all sitting in the You've seen a stagecoach, right? Like in the movies? I think so. Yeah, I'm it's it's, it's like just in case. It's like that. It's uh, it's not super big. Okay. There's like maybe five feet between chairs that face towards each other, and okay, sit so when over the edge turn is like hiding more or less in the corner. He actually isn't really hiding because there's nowhere to hide. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's just sort of withdrawn, He's just like collected to himself. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I guess Baba would start off by introducing himself and then introducing Siren okay. as well. And just like try to get to know the other two people as best as it because like it seems like the Furbolg will you said he like just keeps listening and like talking or whatnot. He'll the Furbolg is very quiet, but he will he will Always. speak uh and will be very friendly about it. Okay. So he's a good listener. Yeah. So we got a a lot of quiet people on this coach. Yeah, it's like I can I can sort of imagine Maoba being like nor- normally he's just a nice guy who keeps things going, but now he almost seems like peppy. Yeah. Just like almost cheerleader. Like he has to be the leader guy because everyone else is too quiet to do anything. Yeah. So he'll just try to, like, get a general, like, talking amongst everyone. Like, just to get to know each other and whatnot and, like, ask, like, what they're good at. Like, what are their skills? Okay. Stuff like that. Um, the, uh, the Kenku will finish polishing one of his blades and then hold it up in front of, in front of his face. And then it vanishes and then appears again and he's holding it by the tip and then he just flips it over in his hand and grabs it by the handle and he says in the uh, the voice of just this very high pitched young feminine voice sneaky okay I feel like Mappa would be quite amused by that. Like maybe even like clap a little bit. And he'll 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 look at you and then put that knife away and pull out another one and polish that one now. And Tuatha will say It is a Furbolg's duty to monitor the comings and goings of nature. I have a duty additional to this. I seek the will of the Queen of the Fay herself. The Lady Titania calls to me, and I follow. Uh, Naba would probably mention, like, oh, that it's, like, very honorable, like always like a person that's driven like that. Mm. 
It is nice to speak with one who understands a higher calling. And the wagon Wait. rattles on. Wait, at this point, Maba's not the Avatar, right? Uh, no. Okay. No, he doesn't have his his uh, elemental abilities yet. Oh. Thanar. Hello. Edermath will motion with a hand up to the uh, portrait over the fireplace, which... As I said before, looks a lot like him, but um, a bit older, a bit sharper, a bit more elf-like. And he will say, my father, uh, a, a good man uh, in service of the Order of the Gauntlet, Emduil Carlath was his name, a... Holy Paladin of Corallon, a full elf, a wood elf. He fought well. His, uh, his, um, sorry, excuse me. He led a force of 20 or so paladins and knights uh, out of, uh, nope. Waterdeep, it was, uh, and they made their way to the Lurkwood, uh, but along the way, they stopped off here in Phandalin for a while. This was back, oh my, this was back during Phandalin's Golden Age, when the mine was still alive and prospering. A, an item was requested by the Order of the Gauntlet. This item, as a matter of fact, and he rises and pulls the spear down off the wall. This, this is Vinrolmir, the Winter's Bane. She's a fine weapon, perfectly balanced. So the Lost Mines really did produce the stuff of legends. <laughs> Yes, they did. I hope they will again someday. This is why it was so important that we hold the mines again. So important that Gundren and his brothers were the ones who took the mines back. This is one of the few times in history that the guilds and orders of this land have worked together as much as they have. Isn't it curious that a member of the Lord's Alliance and one of the Order of the Gauntlet would be here at the same time, and a member of the Emerald Enclave would be so close by? That is three of the five. We're all here to make sure that that mine and that forge do not fall into the wrong hands. So, you said the dragon was usually someone else's problem. So, why did the Order step in? Why did the Order of the Gauntlet step in when it was the Hold's failing? The Hold was called in because the dragon came too close to Neverwinter. She began to expand her territory. She tried to take over the Neverwinter Wood, which she would have done, and nearly did, uh, when Helm's Hold failed. Someone had to take up the call, and it was my father and his men who answered. Uh, bolstered, of course, by this weapon, uh, which has now lost a lot of its magic, to be fair. It's still slightly magical, but the power it held in those days is gone. Perhaps it could be reforged in some way, but that would take some time. Anyway, 
My father rode to meet the dragon in, uh, not single combat. He had 20 of his men with him at the time. But they, they fought well and hard. And in the end, emerged victorious, but barely. They lost, they lost most of them. They lost most of them. But my father survived. And it was due mostly mostly because of this weapon. He uh, went off after that uh, to adventure along the in the uh, interior of Faerun and made quite a name for himself. Anyway, I figured this might be something that uh, you could find interesting. Uh, especially as you deal with Helm's Hold and the Order of the Gauntlet in the future. Is there anything else that uh, that I can help you understand? Not that I can think of. Hmm. Thank you for enlightening me. Yeah, and he'll he puts. I always the... enjoy a good war story. <laughs> ah, yes. Any any war that you can walk away from is a good war story. The other ones are all bad. And he puts the spear back up on the wall. Oh, uh, by the way, the dragon's name was Mileshkis. I don't know, perhaps you will hear the name somewhere spoken, and if you do, you can remember what I've told you. Meleshkis the White Dragon. A terror. Either way, if you need anything else from me, I still have my old notes. I might be of some use to you in the future. Thank you for the information, friend. And thank you for asking, friend. <laughs> Tanner will smile and shake his hand and then begin to head out All right. and he will uh, take his walking stick and follow you out and he sits in a chair on the front porch and just sort of fades into a uh, a meditative pose as he enjoys being alive in this part of the world Siren, you have arrived in Keldel. Si Siren. Yes. There yes. you are. Hello. You have arrived in Keldel. Uh, the city is a reasonable size. It, it's it's quite a bit bigger than Fandolin, but but nowhere near as big as Neverwinter. Um, probably about half the size, I'd say, of Neverwinter. Um, the whole place seems to be boarded up and there is a sense of urgency under everything. Um, do I see people like walking among the streets at all? You do, but when you do, they're casting furtive glances back and forth and all around and, and desperately, um, going from indoors to indoors. There's not a lot of time spent outside. Okay. Uh, what do you do? Wait, so... Are we given a contact to talk yes, to? Yes, you, you do have a contact. Do you go directly to that contact? Uh, probably based on the fact that no one seems friendly in this town, I guess. Or, like, they they seem more afraid. So I'd rather not frighten them anymore and just get it over with. Okay. Um, Tuatha stands sort of in the middle of town uh, where you were just sort of silent for a while. And he, you don't 
he doesn't respond to you for a while. So do you, if you wait for him or do you go and leave him in the street? And this is the first time I've met this guy? Yeah. Uh, he has his eyes closed. You sort of get the idea he's either meditating or sensing something. I would... Have... Remember, by the way, you and Malba. You're playing two characters presently. Yeah. I would have... I would tell Siren... Or Malba would tell Siren to keep an eye on him while Malba and Page turn go find the, the our contact. Page turn has disappeared. Just like you, you saw him get off of the cart, but he is not there now. Oh, okay. Um. So Siren would kind of be freaking out a little bit, because, because I don't know. That's just the way he is. Mm -hmm. But Malbo would, Malbo would stay strong and be like, would, uh, would tell Siren to still stay with the Furbolg. And he would go find the contact okay. by himself. Malba heads off, um, and he will uh, eventually meet with the sheriff of the town, uh, who will give him the basic rundown. Uh, Siren, okay. in the meantime, will stay by the Furbolg and just sort of. Yes. What does he? What does he do? Does he just sort of stand there and watch, or does he sort of wander around a little bit? Does he walk? So I, you're, you're like within ten feet of a fountain that's in the middle of town, with a, a short ledge that you could sit on. He would. He wouldn't be able to sit. He'd be too like anxious. He would kind of just be pacing around the like fountain. Siren, roll a perception check. Oh boy! First roll with the new character. I got this. Okay. Uh, you see a lot of folks uh, darting around like you had before. Uh, you see one man over uh, by, like, behind a building, like, in the shadows. And he reaches into his pocket and pulls out a, a flask and takes a very long pull. And uh, you notice that... Tuatha is mumbling something under his breath. You can't make it out. Um, I can't make it out because he's mumbling or is it because it's a different language? Both. Okay. You figure that if it had been in common, you could probably figure it out. But as it is, it's like the combination of the two make it nearly impossible. Okay. Um, Malba gets the the message that uh, this fellow that they discovered was a werewolf um, had sort of been a, a farmer off just outside of town. Uh, he was kind of a no count. He didn't bring in a whole lot. He didn't work very hard in the fields. Uh, he sort of just made just enough to keep himself uh, alive and to buy more booze. And okay. he was caught uh, one night uh, over the body of uh, one of the town watch. Just the, the, the guy had been gutted. Oh, shit. Okay. And... Uh, they uh, they hunted this werewolf into the nearby woods, and uh, one of the uh, one of the guards had got him pretty good with an arrow that actually bounced off, uh, but it had. They, they actually ran him down and f the, the, the fool ran to his own house and tried to, tried to hide in the basement. And they, uh, they set fire to the place, actually. 
Oh, shit. Yeah, it's just like, burn him. But he uh, was able to escape into the woods. And that was the last they saw of him for... They saw him escape into the woods, though? Yeah, like his tail okay. on fire, essentially. Okay. Uh, and when he uh, hit the edge of the woods, they lost sight of him for about a month. And then a couple of occurrences of wolf sightings in the area, and it had increased recently, such that there had been attacks on children playing uh, just out in the out too close to the woods. And okay. yeah, they had uh, an incident probably two weeks before you arrived where the wolves wolves led by uh, this man uh, in wolf form had attacked a shipment that had been on its way in uh, and had laid waste to all of it essentially uh, and they assume that he is attempting to destroy the town and everyone in it uh, as retaliation for them finding him out and burning his house down. Okay. And what do you do with this information? Um, I ask... Wait, so when was the last time they saw him? Last time they saw him was a week and a half ago. We, uh, he, see, I don't even know how he'd go about tracking. Like, huh. You hear Not... the voice of a young woman behind you very high pitched say sneaky oh i turn around and see page turn right behind me yeah he's just in the door leaning i i he says i'd ask you where you went but i don't know how easily that would be for you to answer he uh he opens his mouth wide and emits a kookaburra laugh Oh god. Weird. Um I ask him if he thinks he can somehow track this wolf man and his wolf boys. Uh he nods. Up and down or left and right? Uh nodding is up and down, shaking your head is left and right. Oh okay. I was just clarifying. Yep. I wasn't sure. Yep, yep, yep. And I ask, can you do that for us? He gives you a feathery thumbs up. Oh. He has thumbs. And then I'll tell the sheriff that we'll hopefully take care of this as soon as possible and then head out. The sheriff's a little freaked out at this whole exchange and also at this bird man. Uh, but he thanks you heartily, uh, shakes your hand, and says that uh, anything they can do to help, just ask. Him.